question, aren't feeling quite the hormonal fluctuations women are. Women have the breast tissue that's, that's really tossing them over the edge with it. Um, the other tissues of the body require about two milligrams a day. That includes the adrenals, the thymus, the ovaries, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and many others. This is way over, even the other tissues, two milligrams a day, that's 20-fold higher than the RDA of iodine. So, I believe we're iodine deficient. We need to take the, get your iodine levels checked, take the right amount of iodine. Um, it's made a huge difference in how I'm feeling. I wrote about my story in my iodine book. Um, it's made a huge difference in how many of my patients are feeling. Um, iodine is also a detoxifying agent for the body. It detoxifies the halogens, uh, which I'll tell you what halogens are, and it also detoxifies mercury very nicely. So the halogens. These are the halogens. They're in the same chemical family of iodine. They're very closely related to the structure of iodine. On the periodic table of chemistry elements, they're in the same line. And the halogens are fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, and acetidide. Well, I'd like to focus mostly on bromide. Bromide is an antibacterial agent used for pools and hot tubs. It's a fumigant for agriculture. It's sprayed on fruits and vegetables. Crops are found to contain high bromine levels. One of my nurse's um, brothers used to drive a truck that, uh, that delivered fruits and vegetables. And he said they would pull up to, I don't know what kind of places they were, they'd pull up to a place, they'd put some kind of hose in the back and spray them. And I'm assuming they were probably spraying with bromine to preserve them. Um, it's a fumigant for termites and other pests. In California in 1981, 6.3 million pounds of bromide were sprayed in 1991, it was up to 18.7 million pounds of bromide. And bromide's a problem because it inhibits iodine in the body. So bromide's added to many soft drinks. as brominated vegetable oil. It's in Mountain Dew, AMP energy drink, and some Gatorade products. My, my daughter, Haley, plays soccer, who's looking in the back of the room right now. And her coach told her that they should bring Gatorade to the soccer games because it's a good energy drink. And I told her, you can, bring water to the, you can bring water to the soccer game. She said, well, everyone else is bringing Gatorade. How come I can't bring Gatorade? And I did tell her it had brominated vegetable oils, but um, she doesn't need Gatorade. So bromine is also used in medicine. 150 years ago, it was used as a sedative. It's still used in many medicines today. I listed some of them on here, atrovent inhaler, atrovent nasal spray, hypertropium nasal spray, Propranthine, which is used for bladder dysfunction. And that last one, pyridostigmine bromide. Does anyone know who got pyridostigmine bromide injections? Gulf War, did somebody say it? The Gulf War people all got that. Or the first Gulf War. I don't know if they got it for this one. Um, and, um, you know, these things have bromine in it, which are very, it's a very toxic agent for the body. In an iodine deficient state, it can really throw things over the edge. Bromine is also used in bakery products. Iodine was added to bakery products in the 1960s as an anti caking agent. One slice of bread at that time contained 150 micrograms of iodine, which was the RDA for iodine. The National Institute of Health estimated the average iodine intake from bakery products was 726 micrograms per day of iodine, which is above the RDA. In 1980, they removed iodine from bakery products due to erroneous information. The endocrinologist started to raise a stink that people were getting too much iodine in their diet. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, one of the reasons that might be cited is one of the thyroid tests that they'll do on people is give them radioactive iodine to either burn their thyroid or to test their thyroid. Radioactive iodine only works in an iodine deficient state. If the thyroid has enough iodine in it, it's not going to pick up the radioactive iodine. In Chernobyl, when they had the nuclear explosion, they gave the population iodine pills to try and prevent, prevent the thyroid from taking up the radioactive iodine that's released. Um, so for, for a lot of the radiology tests on the thyroid to work, they have to be in an iodine deficient state. Um, so they removed iodine from bakery products and they put bromine in it as its replacement. Now bromine not only is a toxic agent to the body that shouldn't be administered, shouldn't be taken in for any condition, but it interferes with iodine uptake by the thyroid gland. Bromine and iodine is very similar to Provera and progesterone. 
Bromine binds to those iodine receptors that blocks iodine in the body. It makes an iodine deficient state worse. It shouldn't be used. So how do you lower bromine levels? Stop ingesting bromine containing products, soft drinks, medicines, etc. BT to organic food that's not been sprayed with bromine. I don't know if the organic products are sprayed with bromine or not. Um, look, I don't know. Um, we also need to supplement with iodine. <laughs> iodine, just as when you take bromine, it causes the body to release iodine if you take enough of it. Reverse happens. You take iodine, you can get the bromine out of the body. So there's a study in eight patients. And what I had them do, I checked their levels of bromine, fluoride, and iodide in a baseline. So before they took anything. Iodine's in purple. And you can see in baseline, they weren't excreting much iodine. I had them take 50 milligrams of an iodine, iodide-containing pill, and I measured their excretion in one day. And the iodine level zoomed up. And I had them take the iodine-iodide pill for 30 days. The iodine level gets even higher. Now, normal levels need to be up around 45 milligrams, so they're getting up there. But the more interesting part of this is that when they took the iodine, at baseline, when they didn't take anything, their fluoride levels, which started off very low, went up 78% from taking one day, one pill, one dose of iodine. So the body starts to release fluoride. Now, fluoride is very close to the iodine structure as well, like bromide. In 30 days of taking it, it went up 66% from the baseline. So the body's getting rid of all this fluoride that's stored up in it and blocking the thyroid receptors, but it's really getting rid of bromide. Now look at this at baseline. They weren't taking anything. Their bodies were excreting a huge amount of bromine. Now you shouldn't be excreting any bromine. It's a toxic substance. It doesn't belong in our bodies. They took iodine. Bromine levels went up 49% in one day. In 30 days, they went up 56%. They were still excreting huge amounts of bromine. Now I've been monitoring my levels of taking iodine for the last nine months. Um, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, and my bromine levels are sky high and still coming out, and they have not come down over nine months. Um, they will come down eventually, but I think many of us are bromine toxic, and we need to get this stuff out of us, and the only way to do it is with iodine. Fluoride, um, fluoride in that family of halogens. It's related to iodine and bromide. It's a very close chemical structure. It's added to drinking water to prevent cavities. It's never been shown to actually prevent cavities. Research has never proven that fluoride uh, prevents cavities in people. All the Western European countries have taken fluoride out of the water supply. Um, this is a study from the World Health Organization, 2001. What they did was they looked at cavity rates in unfluoridated and fluoridated areas. Now, here on the list is all the unfluoridated countries the Western countries of the world. Here's the fluoridated. Now, New Zealand has now joined the unfluoridated areas because they realize the fluoride does nothing to prevent cavities. But you can see all the countries' cavity rates from 1970 to 2000 have gone down, regardless of whether fluoridated or unfluoridated. We need to remove fluoride from our water supply. It's a toxic agent. It, it promotes cancer, um, promotes thyroid problems, and it doesn't help for what the dentists claim that it helps for. Fluoride has been shown to prevent, promote bone cancer. It, it gets the white spots in the teeth. If you look at this next generation of kids that are growing up on fluoridated water, they have huge amounts of fluorosis or white spots in their teeth. And that's a fluoride toxic problem. Hip fractures. There's been numerous studies in, in the conventional literature showing fluoridated areas have significantly higher hip fracture rates than non-fluoridated areas. That fluoride keeps binding to the bones and to the teeth and it weakens them over time. Fluoride can promote lower intelligence. The Nazis knew it. They used to put fluoride in the water supply for their concentration camps to keep the people docile. It's a kidney toxic agent. It inhibits the, it, 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 it causes an inability of the thyroid gland to concentrate iodine. It's a goiatrogenic agent just like bromine is. It promotes goiter, and it's more toxic when iodine deficiency is present. There have been no studies that prove the long-term ingested fluoride has any positive effect in the body. If your dentist is promoting fluoride treatments for your kids, find a new dentist. Fluoride is also found in many medications, Paxil and Prozac, Baycol, Propulsive, Posicor, Estemazole, um, Flonase, Flovent, 
Fen Fen has, has fluoride in it. Iodine is also a chelator of mercury. Um, so, um, it can bind mercury and allow the body to release mercury. So not only does it release fluoride and bromide, um, mercury is another thing. So this is a 37-year-old female. She had a history of fibromyalgia fatigue and Hashimoto's disease, which is a problem, uh, autoimmune problem of the thyroid. 